sand is very valuable, not just in my community or in the river that I grew up around, but also in all the other villages, there is sand being extracted. I'm and I was born and bred here at the Willows Village. Then after my matric, I went to University of Witwatersrand. I grew up around a beautiful landscape, the Drunkensberg Mountain. That view on its own was just amazing. So I've always been interested in finding out how the earth formed and how the mountains formed and all those things. Childhood. I grew up in a family with a lot of siblings. We used to go into the river to swim. The relationship between the community and the Madudume River, it was great. It was not just a recreational site, but it was also a water source and a spiritual site because people used to go there to get baptized. <laughs> During um, rainy season, it was also like a fishing industry for fishermen in the village. So it served as basically a huge ecosystem service. It played a huge role. Back in the days, we, we never even imagined that actually there are bedrocks um, beneath all that sand, because there was just a lot of sand. Like even in the bridge, you can see that there are different marks on the bridge and those marks show that the sand level was once at that point and people could actually even stand on top of the sand and touch the top of the bridge and just ride fun little things on the bridge. But now, as you can see, there's literally just no sand, it's just a bedrock. Tawela <laughs> but <laughs> Come, <laughs> I'm saddened by all this. It didn't really take long. For a minute, I was at university. Then when I came back, I found that the river is in such a huge condition. So it took like five, four years for it basically to move from being at that very well-functioning river stage to it being like this. The Madudunga River used to be a beautiful river. And if they're no longer taking sand from here, it means they're taking from somewhere else. So it's high time that as much as we fail to look after this one, we should look out for all the other rivers that basically might be facing the same 
problem that our river is facing and it shouldn't get to a point where now all the rivers in our region don't have sand anymore and have lost their main function. I am going to Moloro village and Sukwatalim village. That's where we get most my sand mining data from. So I am going to meet up with them there and they're going to take me to the specific sand mining site. Deforestation takes place here before they can mine. Why did not even look at our investigated the way on Chasantagam? Because Nere Duli before he started Duli like Kuranke, so on Fetter Traga and that Skunti Ron, and in that hour, like one of us called by Chasey, Adibis or now, one of them could that hour. So next that I were not under Traga the Droga. But the Traga the Debug, like Nenarji or Nevae Bagamo, so that Rolana and Esconcent group that are check or Navae Baka. So more fit like a more of a surprise or really, you mind. So more tomorrow, check or Nava Magama by a Kamanga to Mille Batlegamo, Baracum Shad. Tomorrow, え、いざあ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、
From my understanding and my observation, if it's river sand mining, it leads to the river banks being destroyed and it also leads to the aquatic species within that river being affected. And it also changes the stream structure or the functionality of that certain river. However, I'm not an expert in the environmental side of things. So in order to get the ecological perspective on sand mining, I went to see Dr. Eddie Riddle, who is the water resource manager at Kruger National Park. Sand acts like an aquifer or a sponge when it rains and the water flows into the river and then flows down the river. Without that sand being there, you're losing that buffering capacity of, of, the, of the hydrology of the river. So the water just runs off. The other aspect that is also a hydrological risk is you're reducing the retention capacity of, of the streams because the water is running off, which means that the, the water doesn't, isn't allowed the opportunity to infiltrate into the ground and therefore recharge groundwater. The other big knock-on is around water quality. Without the sand there and the, the often the reed beds that are associated with the sand, you lose the capacity for the ecosystem to assimilate pollutants in, in the river. In Kotobana village, they mine sand for building. Yeah, it's for building. And this one is a river sand. It's mainly used for baking of bricks and plastering. To go to a mining site and bear witness to it happening without actually having to see on pictures at the office, it's actually quite devastating. When you see the person basically digging up the sand and going as far as approaching the river banks as well, you get to see that it has such a huge impact, not just in terms of the fact that sand gets taken away, but also all the other impacts that it has on the aquatic system or the river system as a whole. It's, yeah, it's quite, it's, it's an intense activity. So how do you choose your side where you can go and collect sand? We just go with the rivers, mm. Mm. where the river is, and then we go to the Indunas. Mm. We go there, we introduce ourselves, mm. we tell them that we need to take sand. Mm. And then we are charged for that or something like that. We have to pay something to, to get a permit yeah. to get that sand. And then they still have to talk to the community around that river. Okay. If they allow us to take it. Mm. So it becomes difficult if you are not from around there. Have you had, ever had a case where community members didn't want you to go and mine in their land? The thing is, when they refuse, some of them, they will tell you, we need this and this and this mm. for you to read. We need to benefit somehow. Yeah, so we weigh those options. Mm. If we can help, then we help them. And do the donors regulate, or do they tell you how much sand you should take out, or they just tell you no, it's fine? No, 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 no. The only thing they regulate, they will tell you not to dig big holes. Okay. You must just level for the kids not mm. to, to, to drown. Mm. Uh, such things, mm. those are their regulations. 
when you're going to a river and find sand, what is the environmental challenge that you find? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do understand the environmental factors that affects mm. when we dig sand. Mm. But uh, like it's a need to, to, to the community. Mm. They need it. Mm. Mm. They need it. And uh, we don't have another way for now. Yeah. Why do you think the communities need sand that much? Our population is growing. Mm. Everyone is building. Mm. I understand that people need houses. Sand must come from somewhere. But at the same time, as much as we want houses, we also want a healthy and good environment, not just for us, but also for the generations to come. So if we cut down all the plants, all in the name of being able to extract sensible houses, then what's gonna happen, the impact is huge and we can't continue sand mining like this.